Good morning, gentlemen, or, uh, or afternoon, fifth block. So this is for block two and five, world history, and this is Monday's um, guided reading. So the video is going to go away in a moment, um, but I'm just kind of going to explain what my expectations are for this particular reading and what my kind of justification for having you guys do this reading is. Um, those of you that had Rome for your recipe, your empire recipe, should be fairly familiar with some of this material. You'll be learning about Rome all of this week because it is kind of the foundation of democratic society and of a republic, which is what our country and our government is. So the first chapter is going to be the Roman Republic. Um, let me go down to our assessment questions so I can kind of explain what you need to be looking for as we are reading together. So, oops, so for each of the vocabulary words, you're going to um, write a sentence explaining the significance of these vocabulary words. So Republic, Patrician, Plebeian, Tribune, Consul, Senate, Dictator, Legion, and Punic Wars, and Hannibal. Um, the only one in there that is a person is Hannibal. So for number two, you are going to, you can get extra credit if this is one of the quiz grades, if you not only explain its importance, but also explain or give a definition for it. Um, you can either do this on Cornell Notes or you can do it on a lined sheet of paper. All of the readings are going to be in the black hanging folder um, designated with a date. The videos will also include a link to the reading in case the copies got misplaced so they can be printed off relatively quickly. Um, our, so first thing is our terms and our names, our vocabulary, we're using those in a sense, or we're explaining their significance and defining them in our own words for extra credit if that's what we want to do. So the second one is what do you consider to be the key characteristic of the early Roman Republic? So there's a section on that beginning couple pages that has you write notes. And this one where it's the origin of Rome, the early Republic, and Rome spread its power, which is the characteristic that is kind of what defines Rome as an empire. The main idea is these are all level one questions. What limits were there on the power of Roman consuls? And in addition to that, why do you think that they limited the power in that way? Um, number four is what was the significance of the 12 tables? Five, how was Hannibal's attack on Rome daring and different? Your thinking, critical thinking and writing questions are over here. So forming opinions. Do you think the Roman government owed its success more to its form of government or to its army? So you're going to make a decision and you need to back that up with evidence. If you think it was the army, you're going to use evidence that supports that the army is the reason that they were um, so successful. If you think it was the form of government, then you are going to use evidence to support that claim as well. Analyzing issues is going to be, do you agree with the claims that early Rome achieved a balanced government? Um, and then why do you agree or disagree with that? Using evidence. Um, eight is going to be, how did Rome expand its territory and maintain control over it? You need to give me two to three reasons on that. Two two, three reasons. Um, for that last part, I want you to write a paragraph and a half, then the writing activity. Write a brief essay explaining what problems might arise from appointing a dictator during a time of crisis. Because dictators are very stable, but none of us want to live under them. So what are the problems that would arise from that? If you are having trouble with that one, think about current dictators that are in power such as Kim Jong-il, I'm sorry, Kim Jong-un, the North Korean dictator, um, Gaddafi, who was, his power was just taken away, and the leader of Syria and their crises that they are having. I'm gonna get rid of my face. Where is that? It is here. Because no one wants to look at that. And then I will start your reading. Um, Follow along with your reading. 
Make sure that you are circling any words that you don't understand, underlining or highlighting any phrases or um, information that can help you answer those questions or that you find to be important. So our main idea is that the early Romans established a republic of republic which grew powerful and spread its influence. It is important today because some of the most fundamental values and institution of Western civilization began in the Roman Republic. Our terms that we are going to be describing the significance of are Republic, Patrician, Plebeian, Tribune, Consul, Senate, Dictator, Legion, Punic Wars, and Hannibal. Those are all in bold in our reading so we can pause or anything like that as we are following along in order to get those done. We're going to be outlining and organizing the main idea and details of the different headings of this so that we can do our question two at the end of our assessment. Setting the sage, while the great civilization of Greece was in decline, a new city to the west was developing and increasing its power. Rome grew from a small settlement to a mighty civilization that eventually conquered the Mediterranean world. In time, Romans would build one of the most famous and influential empires in history, the origins of Rome. According to legend, the city of Rome was founded in 753 BC by Romulus and Remus, twin sons of the god Mars and a Latin princess. The twins were abandoned on the Tiber River as infants, infants and raised by a she-wolf. The twins decided to build a city near the spot. In reality, it was men, not immortals, who built the city, and, and they chose the spot largely for its strategic location and fertile soil. Rome's geography. Rome was built on seven rolling hills at a curve on the Tiber River, near the center of the Italian peninsula. It was midway between the Alps and Italy's southern tip. Rome also was near the midpoint of the Mediterranean Sea. The historian Levi wrote about the city site. Not without reason did gods and men choose this spot for the site of our city. The sal salubrious hills, the river to bring us produce from the inline regions and the seaborne commerce from abroad. The sea itself, near enough for convenience yet not so near as to bring a danger from foreign fleets. Our situation in the heart of all, all of Italy, all these advantages make it of all places the world in the world best for a city destined to grow great. Livy, the early history of Rome. The first Romans, the earliest settlers on the Italian peninsula arrived in prehistoric times. From about 1000 to 5000 BCE, three groups inhabited the region and eventually battled for control. They were the Latins, the Greeks, and the Etruscans. The Latins built the original settlement at Rome, a cluster of wooden huts at the top of seven hills. These settlers were considered to be the first Romans. Between 750 and 600 BCE, the Greeks established colonies along the southern Italy and Sicily. The cities became prosperous and commercially active. They brought all of Italy, including Rome, into closer contact with Greek civilization. The Etruscans were native to northern Italy. They were skilled metal workers and engineers. The Etruscans strongly influenced the development of Roman civilization. They boasted a system of writing, for example, and the Romans adopted their alphabet. They also influenced Roman, Rome's architecture, especially the use of the arch, the early republic. So this is the second part of our outline of notes that we are taking. Around 600 BC, E, an Etruscan became king of Rome. In the decades that followed, Rome grew from a collection of hilltop villages to a city covered, that covered nearly 500 square miles. Various kings ordered the construction of Rome's first temples and public centers, <coughs> the most famous of which was the Forum, the heart of Roman political life. The last king of Rome was Tarquin the Proud, a harsh tyrant. He was driven from power in 509 BCE. The Romans declared that they would never again be ruled by a king. Instead, they established a republic from the Latin phrase res publica, which means public affairs. A republic is a form of government in which power rests with the citizens who have the right to vote for their leaders. In Rome, citizenship with voting rights was granted only to free-born male citizens. Patricians and Plebeians. In the early Republic, different groups of Romans struggled for power. One group was the Patricians, the wealthy landowners who held 
most of the power. The other important group was the plebeians, the com common farmers, artisans, and merchants who made up the majority of the population. The patricians inherited their power and social status. They claimed that their ancestry gave them the authority to make laws for Rome. The plebeians were citizens of Rome with the right to vote. However, they were barred by law from holding most government positions. In time, Rome's leaders followed the plebeians to form their own assembly and elect representatives called tribunes. Tribunes protected the rights of plebeians from unfair acts of patrician officials. So we're thinking about why did patricians want to prevent plebeians from holding important positions. An important victory for the plebeians was to force the creation of a written law code. With laws unwritten, patrician officials often interpreted the law to suit themselves. In 451 BCE, a group of 10 officials began writing down Rome's laws. The laws were carved on 12 tablets, or tables, and hung in the forum. They became the basis for later Roman law. The Twelve Tables established the idea that all free citizens had a right to protection of the law. So this is the ruins of the Forum, the political center of the Roman Empire, still standing in present-day Rome. You guys can take a moment, pause this, and look at the Republican governments. So we are a Republican government. We have a republic. People often confuse us to be a democracy, but we are a democratic republic. Comparing Rome to us, we find it to be quite similar. You can go ahead and pause it and just look over that chart to see where we got our government from. Pause it for maybe three and a half minutes. Government under the Republic. In the first century BC, Roman writers boasted that Rome had achieved a balanced government. What they meant was that their government had taken the best features of monarchy, government by a king, an aristocracy, or government by nobles, and a democracy, a government by the people. See the comparison above of Rome to the United States. Rome had two officials called consuls. Like kings, they commanded the army, directed the government. However, their power was limited. A consul's term was only one year long. The same person could not be elected to consul again for 10 years. Also, one consul could always overrule or veto another's decision. The Senate was the aristocratic branch of Rome's government. It had both legislative and administrative functions in the Republic. Its 300 members were chosen from the upper class of Roman society. Later, plebeians were allowed in the Senate. The Senate exercised great influence over both foreign and domestic policy. The assemblies represented the more democratic side of the government. For example, an assembly organized by the plebeians, the trial assembly, elected the tri tribunes and made laws for the common people, and later for the republic itself. In times of crisis, the republic would appoint a dictator, a leader who had absolute power to make laws and command the army. A dictator's power only lasted for six months. Dictators were chosen by the consuls and then elected by the Senate. The Roman army, in addition to their government, the Romans placed great value on the military. All citizens who owned land were required to serve in the army. Seekers of certain public offices had to perform 10 years of military service. Roman soldiers were organized into large military units called legions. The Roman legion was made up of some 5,000 heavily armed foot soldiers or infantry a group of soldiers on horseback, the cavalry, supported each legion. Legions were divided into smaller groups of 80 men, of which was called a sentry. The military organization and fighting skill of the Roman army were key factors in Rome's rise to greatness. For hundreds of years after the founding of the Republic, Rome sought to expand its territories through trade and conquest. Rome conquers Italy. Rome grew power slowly but steadily as legions battled for control of the Italian peninsula. By the 4th century BCE, the Romans dominated central Italy. Eventually, de they defeated the Etruscans to the north and the Greek city states to the south. By 265 BCE, the Romans were masters of all, nearly all Italy. 
Rome had different laws and treatment for different parts of the conquered territory. The neighboring Latins on the Tiber became full citizens of Rome. In territories farther from Rome, conquered peoples joined all the rights, enjoyed all the rights of Roman citizenship except the vote. All other conquered groups fell into a third category, allies of Rome. Rome did not interfere with its allies as long as they supplied troops for the Roman army and did not make treaties of friendship with any other state. The new citizens and allies became partners in Rome's growth. This lenient policy towards its defeated enemies helped Rome to succeed in building a long-lasting empire. For more than two centuries after 265 BCE, Roman power spread far beyond beyond Italy. Rome's commercial network. First we are going to look at Mr. Hannibal. Hannibal was only a boy of nine. His father, Hamilcar Barca, a general in Carthage's army, made him swear that he would always hate Rome and seek to destroy it. After his defeat at the Battle of Zama and Carthage's loss in the Second Punic War, Hannibal took refuge among Rome's enemies. He fought against Roman forces as an ally of the kings of Syria and Bithynia. When Roman agents came for him in Bith Bithynia on the Black Sea and Anatolia in 183 BCE, he committed suicide rather than submit to Rome. Rome's commercial network right here. Rome's location gave it easy access to the riches of the lands ringing the Mediterranean Sea. Roman merchants moved by land and sea. They traded Roman wine and olive oil for a variety of other foods, raw materials, manufactured goods from other lands. However, other large and powerful cities interfered with Roman access to the Mediterranean. One such city was Carthage, once a colony of Phoenicia. Carthage was located on a peninsula on the North, North African coast. Its rise to power soon put it in direct opposition with Rome. War with Carthage, 264 B BCE. Rome and Carthage went, Carthage went to war. This is the beginning of the long struggle known as the Punic Wars. Between 264 and 146 BCE, Rome and Carthage fought three wars. The first for control of Sicily and the Western Mediterranean lasted 23 years, 264 to 241 BCE. It ended in the defeat of Carthage. The Second Punic War began in 218 BCE. The mastermind behind the war was a 29-year-old Carthaginian Carthaginian general named Hannibal. Hannibal was a brilliant military strat strategist who wanted to avenge Carthage's earlier defeat. Hannibal assembled an army of 50,000 infantry, 9,000 cavalry, and 60 elephants with the intent of capturing Rome. Instead of a head-on attack, however, Hannibal sought to surprise the Romans with a most daring and risky move. He led his army on a long trek from Spain across France and through the Alps. Despite losing more than half his men and most of his elephants, the general's move initially worked. For more than a decade, he marched his forces up and down the Italian peninsula at will. Hannibal won his greatest victory at Cannae in 216 BCE. There is an army inflicted there his army inflicted enormous losses on the Romans. However, the Romans regrouped with the aid of many allies stood firm. They prevented Hannibal from capturing Rome. So here's where the Punic Wars were. This is the major battles at Zama. There's Carthage and Cannae. So think about how many miles they had to march around here. And in addition to that, sail, because you can't march on water. <sighs> Rome triumphs. Finally, the Romans found a daring military leader to match Hannibal's boldness. A general named Scipio devised a plan to attack Carthage. His stra this strategy forced Hannibal to return to defend his native city in 202 BCE, 
At Zama near Carthage, the Romans finally defeated Hannibal. During the Third Punic War, Rome laid siege to Carthage. In 146 BCE, the city was set afire, and its 50,000 inhabitants sold into slavery. Its territory was made a Roman province. <sighs> Rome's victories in the Punic Wars gave it dominance over the western Mediterranean. The Romans went on to conquer the eastern half. By about 70 BCE, Rome's Mediterranean Empire stretched from Anatolia to, in the east to Spain in the west. As you'll read in section 2, however, such growth and power brought with it a new set of difficulties. So you're going to start on your assessment questions if you haven't done so already. And have a lovely day, boys. I need my Jamba Jonga. Stop.